Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to discuss about SOCs and ASICs. Uh, I'm going to explain you some of the concepts of uh, what are SOCs and what are ASICs and several other questions that you have, what's the difference between them and uh, I want to uh, clarify all these things to you. Okay, that's the agenda. So let's go over the topic. We are going to discuss about ASICs first uh, before discussing SOCs because ASIC term came first in the semiconductor industry before SOC came into picture and the technology SOC came into picture. So what are what is an ASIC, right? Application specific integrated circuit refers to a chip that is custom designed for a specific application rather than for a general purpose application. You might have heard of this term ASIC uh, as a interchangeable of a word to uh, IC, which is integrated circuit nowadays. And ASIC was also a company that developed uh, these kind of chips, uh, which are specific to some applications uh, in the 1980s that performed uh, the physical design and manufacturing of uh, these uh, application specific integrated circuits for semiconductor uh, system companies right so what happened really in the history is um, before 1980s the integrated circuits had very less amount of uh, transistors so and these were manufactured by traditional semiconductor manufacturers uh, for example, Fairchild and Texas Instruments. But what happened after 1980s is companies became more competent. And what used to happen there is uh, the other companies before 1980s used to buy the chips that are produced by the Fairchild and uh, Texas Instruments, those kind of companies. And these people used to run their specific application on that general purpose processor. Right. Those were highly general purpose processors, which were designed for almost all the applications to run on it. Right. So since the processors were designed for general purpose, those couldn't be, uh, you know, those were not special for some uh, purpose. See, uh, what happens in military is um, you have a Navy, you have an Army and you have an Air Force. And in those uh, uh, fields also like for example in air force uh, they have a special force right in in army also they have a special force for some frontline work and some other work right some some are at the borders some are at di other different places some are used for internal conflicts and all those stuff so this is similar if we make a soldier general purpose completely, uh, there are general purpose soldiers, like uh, they, they can do everything, but uh, he may not be specialized in one field. So that is the case what happens here. So the chips that were produced by Fairchild and Texas Instruments, those were designed to work on all, uh, I mean, if, if we run any application on that, it should work, right? What happened after 1980s uh, was like, special companies like related to some field for example networking or aerospace industry or automobile industry and all the other types of companies they wanted a chip that is specialized for that or fine-tuned uh, for that field so that they, they can give a better competition to their uh, other companies right because of this what happened was a new type of design technology came into picture which is called as ASIC technology. We shouldn't confuse the term ASIC which I am discussing about with another term which is used as an IC technology nowadays. See, ASIC is an IC technology also which means uh, ASIC, ASIC technology is something called, um, it's, it's a replaceable term for semi-custom design technology of IC technology, okay? So in that uh, technology, what happens is we have either standard cell-based uh, ASICs or gate array-based ASICs. In standard cell-based ASICs, what happens is the lower layers, which are standard cells, either AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, and many other complex boolean logics or flip-flops and all, all the ga gates and uh, small circuitry has been built by some other company and we use it to design our digital circuitry that is the lower layer which is the base layer almost the base layer has been completed by some other company okay either foundry or some other uh, uh, company so they we use it 
from there and we build digital circuitry from our end to complete our integrated circuit that is semi custom the full custom design is something which um, completely from the scratch the integrated circuits developed from our end so semi custom asics are one type of ic technology i'm not discussing about that because most of the companies use that today uh, except very few companies uh, but this kind of abstraction is used but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about asics being specific to application okay that is what uh, asic means in reality so it's a classification of what type of processor and what type of application we can run right in a general uh, general purpose compute system we can run any application but in this asics which are application specific integrated circuits the circuit is completely and fully tuned for specific application to run so for example network interface cards and uh, if you are running an automobile for that automobile what kind of application you are going to run you are not going to change that application i mean drastically right so you may have uh, updates and so but nobody is going to put a new software to uh, offer some other kind of uh, uh, workload to that uh, circuitry so that's the reason why we can make it very specific to that application which is possible so that's the main advantage of uh, asic right and going to the second topic which is soc which is a system on a chip people sometimes ask this question what's the difference between soc and asic i would say it's not a good question and it's it's not a relevant question the reason why i say that is asics are different kinds of uh, stuff and soc is different thing at all right what i'm trying to say is asic is one type of design technology for example or ic technology okay we can separate them by general purpose compute systems right which are microprocessors and asics are asics which are specific to some applications but now what is an soc and what's the difference between soc and an asic it's not a right question because an asic can be soc right and a general purpose computing system also can be an soc so what do we mean by an soc soc is a system on a chip is something which is an ic that integrates all components of the computer and other electronic systems into a single silicon substrate or we can call it single silicon chip why i say that in a single silicon substrate is it's continuous and it doesn't end okay those so what happened what used to happen in the beginning is was uh, if we had a microprocessor its cache used to be very near to the cpu but the thing was it was still outside the cpu okay it was it used to communicate with the cpu but it was not in the same chip it those were dif discrete chips so there used to be many uh, chips your sram is outside your chip your uh, cache is outside your chip your memory controller is outside your chip so so many other components were outside the chip those were discrete components so let's say your memory controller goes it it because uh, it gets spoiled somehow uh, or it gets burnt so you can replace that memory controller or your sram or whatever you can call it your cache you can replace it but nowadays what they do is they combine all these things into one single chip and all all those components are inside the chip that's that's what is called a system on a chip and first soc they say it that it has uh, evolved from the hamilton pulsar it was um having 2100 dollars okay so it was a risk computer it was a watch okay uh, unveiled by johnny carson's show in 1970 which had contained 44 chips and 400 bonding wires it it i cannot completely call it a um a, i a soc because they were still um, different uh, different discrete components but however they were bonded uh, in a single uh, chip that is the main concept of an soc what is a system on a chip 
uh, we can still say that some functionality is outside but most of the things are integrated into single chip that's uh, that is the advantage of soc and since because uh, we have everything inside the communication the propagation delay between the parts of the systems uh, will be very less okay that's the advantage of an, of an soc the only bad thing about soc is if something gets spoiled you have to replace the entire thing right so uh, this is the main difference um, between an soc and discrete uh, components to have right? i hope you got some idea about what is an asic and what is an soc and um, how they are used and how they are good for the design and all thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next video bye bye